Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. In this lesson, we are going to learn my arrangement of the great Beatles song, When I'm 64. So, it's a solo piano arrangement. So, what that means is there's no option of playing with a band, playing with a singer. It's just you on the piano. And what I like about this arrangement or what I enjoyed while creating the arrangement was the fact that the piano is not the driver of this song. The piano is not the main force of the music. So that allows us to think creatively, to figure out options which might suit the piano. And I've also tried to look at lots of commonly used solo piano options, you know, adding the thirds, embellishing the melody. I've also focused a lot on the bass in this lesson because the bass line is really cool. And I've paid a lot of attention towards copying or being inspired from all the elements which are there in the existing song, which is obviously the melody, the vocals, there's a lot of other instruments as well. There's drums, there's bass, bass is huge. And then there's obviously the horn and the wind section where there's a lot of um, fillers, passing notes, which I've designed on the piano in different octaves. So the way I'll do this lesson will basically be I'll tell you the melody as well as the left hand backing together in one shot. Otherwise, it may get confusing to then bring in the left hand later and we'll go section by section. There's an intro and an outro which are ditto. Then there's a A section or the verse and a B section you could call it the next part or part B or chorus or whatever. Okay, so the song is on the original key. I'm teaching you the arrangement uh, based on the original key, which is D flat major. D flat, as you may know, has five flats. Basically all the black notes and the white notes will be F and C. That's about D flat. The song is on 4x4 four four and it's swung. So what that basically means is the 8th note, which was, which once may have been ta-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da, will now be ta da 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 So that's what you call a swing. Uh, it's important to understand the difference between straight music and swing music. And When I Am 64 is a great song which is already swung, right? Ta da 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 it's not ta da 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 it's not ta da 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 it's ta da 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 okay so those are the fundamentals you could say of the song so now let's get cracking and if you read sheet music what might help is we have this entire notation as a pdf available on our patreon page do head over to our patreon get yourselves a copy and obviously there'll be notation for every other lesson we will be putting out uh, and also the previous lesson. So it's all there on Patreon for a simple subscription fee of about $5 a month. Or you could choose some of the other subscription packages as well, which you may find useful. Right. So let's get cracking with the arrangement. So let's first do the intro. The intro, the melody will go. Okay. So starting with F with your thumb. And what I've done with the intro is I've also added some embellishments. So I'm going... So... So we call that a choral part. You could you could perhaps say that that's the tenor part. If this was the soprano. So it's a nice little counterpoint. The melody goes. So melody goes. And the tenor harmony goes Okay, so that's the tenor harmony and you'll find that in the song but the Beatles arrange it so well with so many instruments. So uh, one 
challenge which I had was what parts to keep in the arrangement and obviously what parts have to leave. Not because I wanted to throw them away, but it's just because it's just physically impossible, at least for me, to play all the parts in the song. Sometimes you get a bit carried away with the piano as it kind of feels like a one-man orchestra. You know, it's you can do so many parts if you want to, you know, if you put in the effort, you can play every part in the song. So it's such an incredible instrument because your two hands are always free. Anyway, so coming to the melody. So we split the melody into parts, uh, soprano and tenor at the end of the intro. B flat, A flat, G flat, F. Okay, and then pa, pa, pa. I've just added that for fun. It's a bluesy thing. So, so, and now you'll see how this complements with the left hand. The left hand's basically playing D flat and A flat, sort of like exactly what the bass guitar does in the original song. You should definitely hear the original song. It's a great song. And if you haven't heard or have not listened to the Beatles, uh, you have missed something, right? The Beatles is something which will really inspire you at any level, any genre, whatever you want to play as a musician, you have to go through the pathway which is Beatles, okay? So you go, the left hand I'm going to show you, Pum, 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 pum. Let's do that first with the melody. Okay, let's do that again. F sharp, A flat, and then. You bring your left hand up to do to kind of harmonize the soprano again. Let's do the whole intro again with the bass. Boom, boom, boom. D. Ba, 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 ba. And that takes you into the verse. So the same story with the outro. The only difference I'm doing there is... I'm just kind of ending it there. Pum, 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 or pum, pum, pum. Just do root, fifth, octave, any octave. So this is the outro. Okay, so that's about your intro. Outro, now let's do the verse. The verse is obviously the lyrical part, right? When I get older, losing my hair, many years from now. Okay, let's work it. I think two lines at a time or two sentences at a time. When I get older, losing my hair, many years from now. That particular part. So, the same thing as the intro. Same melody almost, right? Uh, for that line. And the same bass pattern as well. So, let's get that going. When I get older, losing my hair, many years from now. From now, go up to the higher A flat. So many years from now. And then. So that's. Pa, 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 pa. That's the little horn thing or the oboe or clarinet, I guess, which you hear in the background. High pitch. Pa, 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 pa. And you, I've harmonized that because on a piano, you can harmonize anything, I guess. So. Pa, 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 pa. And the, the, the descending, pa, the, the other part. Da, 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 da. Soprano do, 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 do. and do, 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 do. okay, one more time. Ba, 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 losing my hair many years from now. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, the next line moving forward. Will you still be sending me a valentine? Now that's quite easy visually, but it's a bit tricky because it's using a lot of chromatics. So, will you still be sending me a valentine? Get my fingering. 
Mm. Okay, and whenever you practice the melody, try to practice the melody with your snaps of the left hand. Don't let your left hand chill out and be idle. Do something with the left hand to help you groove. So the way I like to groove with my left hand is always snap on the two and the four. So no, don't do. You don't get that swing feel, right? So you should probably go. Okay, so keep the two and four snaps. You see me snapping all the time. It's not some random thing for fun. It's very important. It's part of the learning. Okay, so that whole sentence. Will you still be sending me a Valentine? Birthday greetings, bottle of wine. So, will you still be sending me a Valentine? Probably use the thumb there. And then. Birthday greetings, birthday greetings, bottle of wine, bottle of wine. So as you can see in the notation, lot of accidentals. Bottle of wine. So ba 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 ba. Accidentals means those are notes which the artist has added to kind of add flavor to the song because it's going out of the scale. So it's just. adding this additional embellishment which the song clearly has then pam 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 birthday greetings chromatic from c up to e flat birthday greetings then bottle of wine bottle of wine another chromatic but ending there and then the left hand goes the same pattern but on a flat since the chord is a flat major so Hope the left hand was good there. And then birthday greetings. I'm following what the bass is doing. Birthday greetings. So I'm harmonizing the melody. That's exactly what's there in the song as well, which you should hear. So birthday greetings. And the bass goes. Birthday greetings. And then bottle of wine. come back to your usual root 5 groove bottle of wine so the whole uh, second line climb back to the next line third line the the first half of the third sentence is pretty much the same right if i'd been out to quarter to 3 and then would you lock the door i've tried to add some interest on the keyboard by again bringing in some of those harmonic layers so very important tip so i hope by teaching you this arrangement uh, first of all it will be the start of many more and also it will be your gateway towards all these different techniques which you can use to your own favorite songs i i hope right so let's look at the third line again would you lock the d- okay so would you lock the door lot of things are happening first of all i'm bringing back some harmony in the right hand just there so instead of doing would you lock the door would you lock the door instead of that i'm doing would you lock the door i'm adding these additional hits which you can see in the notation so would you lock the door add some harmonic vibe primarily because if you play chords in the left hand and the melody is already so deep right the melody is around middle c because i'm playing it in the singer's register i don't want to play uh, to me, to my ear i don't like playing it there which is why i've even put an octave sign in the notation for you to follow so i'm playing it around here now would you lock the door and what does the bass do while would you lock the door happens would you lock the door that's pom 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 so that's d flat e flat f g flat and the word door needs to come in a bit earlier so little bit of independence there so the whole third sentence
pa pum so when i do do pa pum so i'm adding a nice little bass embellishment there which may not be in the song so pum 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 pa pum okay that's the whole thing again third line i'll play it again pa pum okay and now will you still need me will you still feed me part okay i'll play it once and then teach you So this is I guess the trickiest part of the song. Uh so I'm trying to put in like a a jazzy walking bass which you'll find. Pum 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 and then pa 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 which is the horn part, right? So Okay, let's first do the bass. Pum 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 pam 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 f sharp a flat a b d flat so pam okay and the right hand you see the parts which i'm adding there f sharp a f f normal f then Will you still feed me? Will you still feed me? So, will you still feed me? Pum 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 pum. That's the chord note, chord root and its fifth. Will you still feed me? B flat F ba ba. And then So, let me play the whole thing again. Will you still feed Let me play that whole thing again. Okay. Pa pa pa. So it goes to the bass. So I hope you've got the left hand. Try to sing it along. That generally helps. Pum 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 pum. Okay, and then uh, the, let's to talk about the right hand. then only the right okay that's quite easy you just add that extra part with the bass that becomes a little tricky okay and now when i'm creating these jazzy chords that gives you like an e flat ninth sound when i'm 60 That's like an A flat thirteenth sound there. So when I'm sixty-four, one more time. When I'm sixty-four, so I'm imagining like an entire horn section or something playing that together. So piano is really awesome in that sense. If you can digest what's there in an existing song, can always bring it to the keyboard. There it's always a possibility. Which is why I always like doing arrangements or covers of songs some of which may not even need the piano. You can see some of my covers I've done uh, a Nirvana song of all the songs. We've done a Nirvana cover. We I've done a uh, one of my favorite bands from India Parvaz uh, a Parvaz cover. So most of those songs I try to do in a in a sense that the song doesn't have the piano so what could the piano do so that could be a way you can work forward don't always cover songs which are piano songs you know because that has been done before you know so you try to think a bit out of the box sometimes that can also be of great value okay so this is the whole verse or the a section however it ends with let me just show you the ending um Sixty-four, and now the B. Pa 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 pum, pa 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 pum. So it's a simple D flat arpeggio. Pum pum pum, pum 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 in triplets. Okay, whole uh, A section. Let's get it done slowly. You can play along if you wish. Climb. Three, 
greetings repeat third line papam klein triplet okay so that's the entire a section check out the notation as well or rewind the video whatever way you can to kind of learn it and um let's move on so the next section i've completely changed the feel of it i've tried to make it a bit more melancholic um to to see if it adds something different to the song right so let's get cracking with the b section right so for the b section i'm kind of taking the entire melody up a notch or up an octave instead of doing trying to play it here So I think that first line is quite easy it's literally just this Okay that's said Every summer we can rent a cottage in the Isle of Wight if it's not too dear and figure out some of those off beats where he kind of precedes the beat if it's not too dear he's not if it's not too dear pam that will be a bit too cheesy i guess so pam 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 and then so the left hand is basically starting with the b flat minor root and fifth then you climb and play all and then play thirds right so third 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 another third end on f a flat and then you groove in the left hand okay that's like a b flat minor inversion where you go the top two notes first and you stop there one more time with the bass bass is slightly tricky you may want to hold down the pedal because if you have to jump from here to here the pedal will really help also i've put a marking to kind of play it softer okay come in comparison with the earlier that's a bit more lively but when we go to this second part trying to make it a bit more melancholic and now you bring it up and then let's move on to the next sentence which is pa 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 so here i have tried to kind of emulate the backing vocals add some of my own harmony and just try and put it all together right so that's that that line we shall scrimp and save so it goes we shall scrimp and save so the soprano will go save but the other harmonies go to ru 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 okay and the word save the soprano can be held with this finger so it goes we shall with the lower third we shall scrimp and and save hold on to the soprano there and the left hand we shall quite easy just a b flat we shall scrimp and okay i'm just adding the base of the song pum 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 so we shall pum 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 pa pum 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 so there's a kind of a crescendo there how do we create the crescendo first of all by building the intensity pum 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 okay and then you drive it pum or you can figure out any other way you want to build the chord you know like mm, 
you can just basically go crazy there i guess right that could work okay let's just do the two lines again and then let's move on okay so there i'm going to like these staccato chords with the melody okay but i'm harmonizing the melody because the piano otherwise may sound a bit weak at the top end so so that harmony and then ba bum some nice staccato octaves there add that intensity one more time Okay, now the Vira Chuck and Dave bit, which is pretty much exactly what's going on in the song, which goes Vira Chuck and Dave, and I'm coming down to Dave at the lower end. So Vira. So what I have done is kind of do an interplay with the right hand and left hand there. Vira Chuck and Chuck and, and I'm whacking this twice there in succession. Vira. Chuck and Dave, Dave, you come down, and then that's the other instrument, I guess, the clarinet or so in the song. So, Vira, Chuck and Dave. Right. So let me show you that. Now you need both hands together. There's no point in doing left hand and right hand separately. We have to do it together. So Vira Chuck and Dave. Ba da da di 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 di. Get that. Start with your thumb. Ba di 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 di. Bum 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 bum. So that's left right left left right. Ba 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 ba. And it ends with the dominant A flat chord. Ba 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 ba. One more time. Vira Chuck and bum 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 bum. Dominant seventh, and then the outro, which I told you earlier. Okay, so. It's a very very interesting song, and I think it'll be quite challenging for you at any level. If you're a beginner, what I would suggest you to do is ignore all the harmonic embellishments notated in the right hand. Just don't do any of the harmonic embellishments. Just focus on the melody. So uh, you can just do it. Uh, just do only the soprano part. If you are an intermediate uh, or an advanced player, play it exactly as it's written, and then have some fun. Have your own improvisation around it. And uh, I would always encourage you if you have a strong backing of chord theory, make a note of the chords. Make a note of each chord before you play, and uh, it may also help. to get the get yourselves a copy of the notation it will be available on our patreon so do head over there and get yourselves a copy right now and support the channel it will be awesome right so this is when i am 64 by the beatles an amazing song which does not really have the piano it's more vocals and horns and bass and big band and what not uh, i hope you found the the arrangement useful and i hope it can help your growth as a as a piano player right again this is jason here from nathaniel thanks a ton for watching the lesson if you haven't already hit that subscribe button hit the bell for notifications very very important and i will see you in the next one